Hello and welcome to this presentation of the STM32 digital filter for Sigma Delta Modulators interface. The features of this interface, which behaves like ADC with external analog part and configurable speed versus resolution ratio, will be described. The DFSDM peripheral is a new digital peripheral inside the STM32 products. Its behavior is finally like standard ADC with the analog part outside the microcontroller. The main benefit is to move the analog part outside the microcontroller and to propose an internal digital part with a wide range of features. The DF-SDM represents the digital part which is connected to the analog part by fast serial interface. The external analog part is usually a Sigma Delta modulator offered by a wide range of vendors. This feature offers the possibility to choose a specific analog part according to the user's needs, like galvanic isolation for motor control or metering applications, a low noise and high precision analog part for sensor data acquisition applications, or a cheap analog part for price sensitive applications. Finally, the analog part provides digitized data for DFSDM. The digital part, represented by the DFSDM peripheral, performs a digital signal processing from external data. Therefore, it offers a scalable ratio solution between speed and resolution, but also an additional functionality integrated in standard built-in ADC, like analog watchdogs, injected and regular conversions, flexible triggering system, brake signal generation, and extreme detector. Digital MEMS microphones providing a PDM output data format can be directly connected to DFSDM, which can directly process the audio signal. The DFSDM is able to process the external serial data and also the internal parallel 16-bit data transfer provided by the CPU or DMA from memory. The DFSDM was developed due to a need for a Sigma Delta ADC with scalable speed versus resolution. More than 16-bit accuracy inside a microcontroller is a problem because of noise from the digital part. The solution is to move the analog part outside the microcontroller. The speed versus resolution ratio setting is a task for the internal digital part, which is the digital filter in the hardware. Although it behaves like a complete analog to digital converter with an external analog front end, the DFSDM is purely digital with its analog part outside the microcontroller. The DFSDM integrated inside STM32 products provides the digital part of the complete Sigma Delta ADC with an external analog part, which is the Sigma Delta modulator. Both parts are connected through the serial interface, which provides a 1-bit Sigma Delta stream. The average value of this stream represents the analog value on input. Applications can benefit from the easy connection. Just one or two wires are needed. Thanks to the analog being located outside the microcontroller, there is less noise caused by the microcontroller. The balance between speed and resolution according to application needs can be set by configuring the digital filter. Transceivers provide the serial connection to the external Sigma Delta modulator. They support serial connections with configurable protocols, SPI or Manchester, and configurable parameters. Their functions will be explained later in detail. Transceivers also have support for internal 16-bit parallel data inputs, which will be written to the DFSDM input data registers by the CPU or DMA, and optionally by the internal ADCs. For STM32, L45X, 46X, 49X, 4AX devices only. Filters are the core of the DFSDM function. They perform 1-bit stream filtering to provide higher output resolution at lower speeds. There is an additional integrator behind the digital filter which provides additional data averaging. Applications can be designed with various types of Sigma Delta modulators from various vendors. The parallel data input feature can perform post-processing of any internal data, for example, internal ADC streams, audio data filtering, etc. There is a list of additional functions which will be explained later in detail. The entire digital filter for Sigma Delta Modulators interface consists of eight serial transceivers, 
four sync filter parts and integrators, four output data units, four analog watchdogs, eight short circuit detectors, four extreme detectors, and eight parallel data input registers. For STM32L45X46X devices, the configuration is only one half, four transceivers and two filters and integrators. The STM32L45X46X49X4AX devices feature parallel inputs from internal ADCs. Serial transceivers provide the connection to the external Sigma Delta modulator. SPI mode works up to 20 MHz or the DFSDM clock divided by 4. There are configurable options, including sampling edge selection, data rate measurement, and clock presence monitoring. One wire Manchester coded mode, where clock is recovered from the data, works up to 10 MHz or DFSDM clock divided by 6. A synchronization detection feature is also available in Manchester mode. Manchester mode also offers the lowest system cost in case of optical isolation of the Sigma Delta modulator. Then only one single isolator per input channel is necessary. The DFSDM clock features a clock output signal to drive the Sigma Delta modulator. It can be used as a source for the SPI clock input by internal interconnection in order to save external pins. The clock output has an adjustable division factor and can be driven either from the system clock or from the fine-tuned audio PLL clock. Parallel transceivers provide parallel inputs from internal data sources, for example from memory buffers. Parallel inputs are usually used for fast hardware filtering of internal data from the ADC or any data collected from a communication peripheral. Data can be written to the DFSDM parallel input registers by the CPU or DMA configured in memory-to-memory -memory transfer mode. For STM32L45X, 46X, 49X, 4AX devices, the internal analog-to-digital converters provide parallel data directly to the DFSDM parallel input registers. The digital filter averages the one-bit input data stream from the Sigma Delta modulator into a higher resolution, but with a slower data output. The digital filter is Sync X type with an order from 1 to 5. A fast sync type filter is also available for selection. The oversampling ratio means how many samples will be averaged in a single filter run. The oversampling ratio can be selected in a wide range from 1 to 1024. Not all combinations of filter order and oversampling ratios are available because in higher filter orders, the oversampling ratio must be reduced to not overflow the 31-bit data width, which is the internal filter resolution. The integrator unit performs additional simple averaging of data provided by the digital filter. It provides just a simple summing of the data coming from the digital filter. The number of samples to be summed can be set from 1 to 256. The correct configuration must take care that the final data length fits into the 31-bit width, which is the resolution of the internal integrator. The width of the data coming from the digital filter must also be taken into account. The output data unit adjusts the final data before they are written to the final data register. An offset value that will be automatically subtracted from the data result for each channel can be defined in the offset register. The correct offset values are determined using the calibration procedure. This calibration procedure should be programmed in user firmware and depends on the type of Sigma Delta modulator connected and application needs. The maximum resolution of the final output data register is 24 bits, but the internal resolution can go up to 31 bits. But certain applications have their own constraints. For example, 8, 12, 16, or 24-bit data resolution. Therefore, there is an option to perform a right-bit shift of the data to provide the final data result with the required width and not overflow the 24-bit width of the final data register. Right-bit shift is configurable from 0 to 31 bits. The final resolution then depends on the digital filter and integrator settings as well as the right-bit shift option. The analog watchdog monitors sampled analog data to see if it remains within the selected high and low threshold values. 
The input to the analog watchdog function can come from the result of the final converted data or directly from the input serial channels through a configurable filter. If data exceeds the allowed boundaries, an interrupt can be invoked or a break signal generated. If an interrupt is invoked, the software decides about the next actions. If a break signal is generated, this break signal can perform a safety function directly by hardware. For example, stop a timer which controls the motor. There are separate high and low threshold levels and separate flags for each threshold to know if a threshold has been reached. The analog watchdog can monitor two types of data. The first type is standard output data, as with a standard ADC. The second type of data can come from serial transceivers through configurable dedicated filters. This second option allows you to select faster signal monitoring when the required speed and resolution is set by the filter parameters. Each serial channel watchdog filter is configurable from 1 to 3 and its oversampling ratio in range from 1 to 32. The data from these watchdog filters can also be read by user firmware. The short circuit detector monitors input serial channels for a saturation state. When an input signal is saturated, it means that it is outside the allowed measurement range and therefore there is an overflow or underflow of the signal. When measuring current, this event usually detects an overcurrent or short circuit or an overvoltage when measuring the voltage. Detection of input signal saturation is based on monitoring the input serial data stream coming from the sigma delta converter and watching if there is a consecutive set of ones or zeros for a relatively long time. This maximum saturated time can be set in the range from 1 to 256 of sampled input data which will have the same value, zero samples or one samples. Monitoring is performed independently from the main conversion. The main conversion can perform conversion from another channel or can also be stopped. All input channels can be monitored in parallel with their own saturated time setting. When a saturation event is detected, an interrupt can be invoked or a break signal generated. Then, just as with the analog watchdog, the software decides the following actions or the hardware break signal can perform a safety function without any software latency. For example, it can stop the timer which controls the motor in the event a short circuit is detected. The extremes detector monitors output results and stores the extreme values into minimum and maximum registers as well as the associated channel number. Monitoring of data for extremes is only performed on selected channels to ensure that channels do not mix different input levels. Stored extreme values are refreshed each time the values are read in the register. Regular conversions have less priority and can be interrupted by an injected conversion. If the regular conversion was interrupted by an injected conversion, it is restarted once the injected conversion is finished and this interruption is indicated as a flag for this delayed regular conversion. Regular conversions can be launched only by software and there is no scan mode available. Regular conversions can run in continuous mode in which there is no channel switching and they can be performed in fast mode without filter refill. Regular conversions are used for measurements for which timing is not critical, for example when measuring temperatures or slow signals. Regular conversions are also typically used for continuous conversions from one channel only, for example audio or energy measurement applications. Injected conversions have high priority. They can interrupt regular conversions immediately and start just after being triggered. Any of the input channels can be assigned into an injected channels group. There are two modes of conversion behavior, scan mode and single mode. In scan injected mode, all channels from the injected channels group are converted, starting from the lowest to the highest channel number in a group when a trigger occurs. In single injected mode, only one channel from the injected channel group is converted and the next channel from the injected group is selected for the next conversion. The next trigger will start this next channel conversion and another higher channel from the group is selected. Injected conversions can be launched by software or by hardware from timers or an external pin. Injected conversions cannot run in continuous mode, but this mode can be emulated using a periodic timer trigger.
Those modes make it possible to choose the correct conversion mode according to application requirements. The MEMS microphone provides a pulse density modulated or PDM data signal whose format is theoretically like the Sigma Delta bit stream from the Sigma Delta modulator. The MEMS microphone has stereo support if two microphones are connected in parallel with common data and clock signals. Rising clock edge samples left audio data. Falling clock edge samples right audio data. Implementation into DFSDM transceivers requires this configuration. Channel 0 uses redirection input from channel 1. Channel 1 uses direct input. Channel data, left versus right, are separated inside by selecting either the rising or falling edge in the SPI configuration of channels. The clock signal is provided by the DFSDM clock output because the MEMS microphones are slaves and need an external clock for data sampling and communication. A set of interrupts related to DFSDM events has been implemented to increase CPU performance. This table lists all of the DFSDM interrupt sources. End of conversion events with separate flags for regular and injected conversions. Data overrun events with separate flags for regular and injected conversions. Analog watchdog events short circuit detector events, and channel clock absence event. To decrease the CPU intervention, conversions can be transferred into memory using a DMA transfer. DMA transfers for injected and regular conversions can be enabled separately. The Direct Memory Access Controller, or DMA, can also be used as a method for fast data transfers into parallel data registers. In this case, the parallel data are transferred from the memory buffer into the parallel data register by using the DMA. The DMA should therefore be configured in memory-to-memory -memory transfer mode, where the target address is the address of the parallel input data register. The DFSDM peripheral can be active only in run and sleep modes. In all other low-power modes, including stop, standby, and shutdown modes, the DFSDM must be disabled. DFSDM performance depends on the maximum allowed input data rate because each input data sample causes the next digital filter operation. DFSDM allows operation at a maximum input data rate of 20 MHz in SPI mode or 10 MHz in Manchester mode. Parallel data inputs have the same performance, so parallel data can be put into DFSDM at full 20 MHz speed using either the CPU or DMA. Applications benefit from DFSDM high-speed processing, which now supports all existing Sigma Delta modulator speeds. The STM32L4 Evaluation Board can be used to run two simple application examples to help you explore the digital filter for Sigma Delta modulator's interface. The first example is a demonstration of the MEMS microphone directly connected to the DFSDM peripheral. Data from the microphone are processed by DFSDM with correct filter settings and then collected into a memory buffer using regular continuous conversions and the DMA. Recorded data from the microphone are then immediately sent by the DMA from this buffer to the I2S peripheral and played by headphones. The second example is a PT100 thermometer which uses an external STPMS2 Sigma Delta modulator, which monitors two channels. One channel senses the voltage, and the second one senses the current on the PT100 sensor. Both channels are sampled using timer-triggered injected conversions in scan mode. Software then computes the PT100 resistance from collected data and finally the temperature. This schematic shows an example of the PT100 thermometer. Here you can see how the STPMS2 device senses the voltage and current over the PT100 sensor. Sensed data are sent from the STPMS2 device to the DFSDM peripheral through the serial interface. This example shows a typical one-phase electricity meter design using an STPMS2 device and STM32 microcontroller. The STPMS2 is a dual-channel Sigma Delta modulator designed for electricity meter applications. It has voltage and current channel inputs. The current channel features a programmable gain amplifier to cover a wide range of measured currents. Sampled 1-bit data are sent by the serial interface to the host device, which here is the DFSDM interface. 
Both voltage and current 1-bit data samples are sent on the same data wire, but the voltage is sampled on the rising clock edge, while the current is sampled on the falling clock edge. The clock is provided by the DFSDM and can run up to 4 MHz. The DFSDM then processes the voltage and current channel 1-bit data streams into output data with a higher resolution and slower data rate. Finally, the firmware uses FFT analysis to calculate the electric power and energy from the current and voltage samples. This example shows a three-phase electricity meter design using shunt resistors for sensing current. There is no need to use expensive current transformers. Voltages are sensed by three resistor dividers and external sigma delta modulators. Currents are sensed by three shunt resistors. Each shunt resistor voltage is sensed by one sigma delta modulator. Because each sigma delta modulator operates at a high phase voltage, galvanic isolation is used for data transfers into the DFSDM. If the sigma delta modulator uses the Manchester coded serial protocol format and has an internal clock source, only one isolator per phase is necessary. If the sigma delta modulator uses the SPI serial format, two isolators per phase are necessary. Each sigma delta modulator is powered from a separate DC supply voltage. This example is related to a three-phase industrial, high-voltage, high-current motor drive, where floating shunts and galvanic isolation are standard. A single reading channel is represented here, while in the application, two or three channels are used for the current in addition to two or three channels for the voltage. The currents are usually measured simultaneously by three DFSDM channels, while the voltage can be measured sequentially with the same DSFDM channel. The same bit stream is processed three times. First, for high accuracy measurements, the main filter is used over a relatively long time. This measurement is done synchronously with a PWM period to avoid switching noise and have regular samples. Second, the watchdog channel uses the same bit stream with its own lower order filter continuously monitors the signals and invokes an interrupt in case of overload with medium reaction time. And third, the short circuit detector is used to detect very rapidly a modulator saturation, continuous series of zeros or ones with a programmable length, and automatically disables the PWM generator through a dedicated DFSDM to the timer interconnection by a brake signal. The peripherals listed here influence DFSDM behavior. Please refer to the corresponding peripheral training for complete information. This slide presents the key differences between product devices